Charles, thanks for being with us today. Oh, John, I appreciate you having me. It's all, it's always a pleasure. Uh, it certainly is for me as well. Uh, story out that we saw, I wanted to talk to you about and get your take on it. More El Pasoans getting concealed handgun licenses. That's the, 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 the title of the story. But let's get into this a little bit. Uh, uh, what, what's happening down here in El Paso from what you see? Well, it, certainly there's a general increase, in fact, a huge increase in the number of Texans getting uh, a Texas concealed handgun license, or what we commonly call a CHL. And uh, El Paso is, is certainly kind of leading the charge at this point, as are other areas along the border. The, uh, the violence from Mexico has a lot of folks worried. We know that there have been some spillover into Texas already, uh, the NRA at, at our annual meeting. Uh, and the extravaganza had a had a, a focus on on a Texas rancher that was murdered by someone trying to come in illegally. Uh, the real irony is he was murdered by a man that he helped. Apparently, this this fellow was uh, right. dying of thirst. He helped him, and he was murdered. So, whenever that kind of stuff really gets all over the media, uh, people tend to head to their CHL instructors in much larger numbers. So, and, and it's kind of a natural thing. We saw this, Charles, in Texas and in in other states around the country when people feel threatened or feel you know, like personally threatened or they feel their their rights or freedoms are being threatened sometimes they, they they are motivated and they act I was referring specifically to when President Obama came into office there was this uh, surge in in uh, purchasing of firearms and gun ownership it was a uh, I mean heck he was the the best unintentioned uh, salesperson that the uh, the farms industry could have had uh, but that kind of you know we can't we can't look at that anymore this is a whole different phenomenon with CHL licenses happening in Texas and it looks like not just in El Paso but in Texas Texas in general, I'm sure the other border states, we can uh, trace, as you're saying, to, to the situation on the border. Uh, you're absolutely right, uh, and especially the comments about the Obama factor. I mean, we've all, all those, those folks who are involved in shooting or gun ownership or whatever certainly saw the spike in gun sales and, and ammo sales. They saw an increase in the price of guns. And as all of us know, all of a sudden, it seemed like a matter of weeks, the shelves were bare at most of the places that uh, folks bought ammunition. That tended to, to die off a little bit. I mean, the effect of that tended to die off a little bit. But, pardon me, we also saw that same increase in the number of folks wanting to get a Texas CHL. As that, as that demand kind of backed off a little bit after, uh, after over a year, uh, we started seeing a spike again, and the spike coincided with all the news reports about the violence in Mexico and, again, uh, the murders of some Texans along along the border by illegal aliens, whether they were uh, connected with the drug cartel or not is unknown at this point. But you're absolutely right. Uh, whenever whenever folks are, are threatened, be it uh, because of an increase in crime or something personal to them and their lives and their family, that's a natural thing to do. And yeah. Now, you're not right on the border, and you're in Houston, but you're in Texas, and you're down there in the heart of it. So, Charles, tell us here in the rest of the country, how bad is it down there? How bad is it from your personal experience, and just how bad is it the way it's affecting people down there with the situation on the border? Well, the situation on the border, as you say, is a long way from us here in Houston. Uh, I, I, my office is in downtown Houston, and we certainly don't see the numbers. We don't see the reports that you do on the news about about problems uh, that they're having in El Paso or some along the ranch lands. But what is happening, uh, for example, is uh, there's there's a tragic case where a 14-year-old girl was murdered in a robbery. If you can imagine what in the world a 14-year-old child would have that would be worth you know, a, a hijacker uh, even attacking her, much less killing her. Right. Well, it turn, turns out the man, the trigger man in that deal was, was uh, someone who was illegally here, been deported twice before, and the family, understandably, is enraged. And, and that all over the news helps to drive the demand for concealed handgun licenses up here as well. I think if I, I may I may have to stand corrected, but I want to say that the last four Houston police officers killed in the line of duty, uh, other than by car accident, were killed by people that are here here illegally, including two who were previously deported one or more times. So all of that it, it, it drives people to thinking, okay, how do I protect myself? How do I protect my family? And I know one of the, as an attorney, I'm asked this question quite frequently, you know, should I get a, hand, a handgun license or not? 
that's a personal decision that I really can't advise someone, but what I do tell folks is to look at it this way. It is an option. If you get the license, it doesn't mean you have to carry a gun, but it gives you an option you would not otherwise have if you feel the need arise. It yeah. either arises daily or because of certain areas that you're going to have to travel. And I think that message is hitting home with a lot of folks. And the sad part about the situation with the border, Charles, and you mentioned the uh, the, the outstanding video that the NRA produced about the situation on the border. It, it uh, the, the anti-gun people are trying to turn this around and say, this whole problem is stemming from firearms that are coming from the United States and from gun shows and yada, yada, yada. They're pouring across the border. It's, what's this 80% number they were throwing around, which, by the way, isn't true, and nobody can prove it. It was just a number they grabbed. And, of course, they, the, a lot of the media who are anti-gun pick up on these numbers and you know, perpetuate them. But the real truth is the, the, the legal gun ownership in America across the border in Texas, in Arizona, makes it so just what you said, so people can defend themselves when they feel threatened. We have the right, the, the freedom, thanks to the Second Amendment, to defend ourselves legally and lawfully against these bad guys who may be coming across the border. Uh, exactly, and and uh, you're you're unfortunately accurate in your description of the news media reporting on the supposed uh, gun running down into Mexico. And you're right; they were throwing around ridiculous percentage, eighty percent of guns. But the but but the the uh, small print, if you will, was eighty percent or pick your pick your percentage of the number of guns traced. traced. Well, what they didn't tell you is that the number of guns traced were less than 4% of yeah. those that were actually yeah. confiscated. So, so doing the math, and I'm not a math, 80% of 4%, we're not talking 80%, we're talking about, what, about a percent or two? Oh, exactly, exactly. And and what's ignored in those reports, because of, of a political bias and a political goal, what's ignored is the fact that most of the guns that, that folks would see on the evening news that were collected were belt-fed machine guns. They were rocket launchers. Yeah. They were M79 grenade launchers. I mean, it's all this kind of stuff that, that you, you that can't, people, can't legally buy here anymore. Right, that people are getting from arms dealers, and they're coming from Central and South America, other countries from arms dealers, not from gun shows. You can't go to a gun show in Texas or or, or or Arizona and buy a rocket launcher or a, you can buy the only way you can buy a fully automatic is with it's it's been well federally regulated since what 1934 I think the, the way you can buy them it's very heavily regulated and and you just can't go into a gun show and buy one uh, no, no no that's not and and, and I mean it's one thing to di- disagree on a political issue I mean uh, I'm 60 years old I, I've disagreed with folks on political issues but it's quite another to be so intellectually dishonest especially when it hits it hits a person's safety. So while while the anti-gun groups would try to to push for various types of gun control, anything from the so-called assault weapons ban to to repeal of concealed handgun license laws, in spite of the fact that they've been hugely successful in every state that has adopted them, uh, it, that's what they're trying to do. And and the truth is, it's not going to affect the drug cartels. They're getting guns from from deserters in their own military. They're getting them through South America, as you said. A lot of them are coming from China, but the push with the gun control advocates would be to dis- to disarm honest citizens and leave them absolutely incapable of protecting themselves. And if you need this, you know, a very close example of, of what that brings us, we can look to Mexico. I heard on the news last week they had lost over 24,000 people murdered because of the drug cartels in something like the last 14 months. Wow. I mean, that's that's what gun control gets you. That's scary stuff. Very quickly, before I let you go, Charles, uh, tell us what's happening, what's coming up on the uh, on the horizon with legislation in Texas. Well, as you're aware, John, uh, our legislature meets every two years for four months uh, in odd years. And uh, the only thing I can say uh, with absolute confidence is that we will again be pushing for an employer parking lot bill, the the employee security bill, so that employers uh, cannot, uh, at a whim, leave their employees completely defenseless, driving to and from work, sometimes over great distances and sometimes with their children while they're dropping them off at school or daycare. And we're certainly going to push for the campus security bill that will allow uh, adult student, uh, college students that have a Texas concealed handgun license to defend themselves on campus so that we do not see a repeat of a Virginia Tech-style massacre in Texas. Wow, that's great news. Thank you for uh, letting us know, and we'll stay in touch with you about that. And thanks for all your hard work down there for Second Amendment and gun owners down in the great state of Texas. Charles Cotton, NRA board member and attorney in Houston, thanks for being with us here on NRA News.